So what makes a good doctor? A good doctor is kind, they're compassionate, they're empathetic, they're able to relate with their patients and they're also patient with their patients. A very good afternoon to everyone. Professor Thomas Kaufman, Dean of Duke NUS, Governing Board, Sing Health and our Senior Hospital Leadership, Deans of Duke NUS, Duke NUS Clinical Faculty, Distinguished Guests, Class of 2025, Family and Friends. A warm welcome to the Duke NUS White Court Ceremony for our 15th MD class. My name is Dr. Suzanne Goh, and I'm the Associate Dean of Student Affairs, and I'm very excited and honoured to be your Master of Ceremonies for today. The White Coat Ceremony is a very special occasion and marks the student's entry into our noble profession. Before we commence, here are some housekeeping rules. I would like to inform you that this session is being recorded and live streamed on Facebook. We may also use the footage and images in the school's digital and print publications. We respectfully ask that you keep your microphones muted and your cameras on throughout the event unless specifically directed. When we recite the Hippocratic Oath, we welcome all doctors present to unmute your microphones and join the class and faculty to recite the oath together. Thank you for your kind cooperation and participation in making this a wonderful celebration. Students, we know that a virtual ceremony might not have been what you were envisioning. However, COVID pandemic or not, this ceremony is important as it marks the start of your formal medical education at Duke NUS Medical School. Our program this afternoon starts with welcome remarks from the Dean of Duke NUS, Professor Thomas Kaufman, and continues with the virtual presentation of White Coats by the Vice Dean of Education, Professor Ian Curran. We are pleased also to have alumnus Dr. Jun Yu from the class of 2020 with us to introduce the new class of 2025 as they don their White Coats later. Professor Curran will then lead the students and clinicians in the collective recitation of the Hippocratic Oath. So without further ado, it is my pleasure to invite Dean Thomas Kaufman to share with us his welcoming remarks. Dean Kaufman, please. Thanks, Suzanne. Um, I'd like to give some special greetings to our governing board chairman, Mr. Go Yu Lin, the provost of NUS, Professor Hotek Hua, CEO of Sing Health, Professor Ivy Young, our founding governing board chair, Mr. Tony Chu, all of our master academic clinicians and senior clinical leaders from the Singh Health Duke NUS Academic Medical Center. Distinguished guests, colleagues, and a very special welcome to the Duke NUS class of 2025, their families and friends. Good afternoon and welcome to the white coat ceremony for the Duke NUS class of 2025. This ceremony represents a significant milestone for our new medical students. And it's a way of welcoming you not just to, as first year students at Duke NUS, but as future colleagues in the medical profession. We mark this transition with the donning of a white coat. One of your class members likened this to a superhero cape, but as a member of the profession, the coat actually marks its wearer's commitment to helping those in need with the power to cure sometimes, relieve often, and comfort always. Unlike superheroes, we don't gain our powers serendipitously overnight. Instead, they are a result of years of hard work and training, a journey you, the class of 2025, are now embarking on. With great power comes great responsibility, a responsibility we accept by pledging the Hippocratic Oath and upholding its tenets throughout our career as doctors. Today's event marks the second virtual white coat ceremony that we've done at Duke NUS. So earlier this year, we were optimistically thinking that we might celebrate this event in person, but the recent rapid spread of Delta variant has forced us to pivot once again. But I have to say, if this pandemic has taught us anything, it is to be resilient and adaptable. Skills that our education and student affairs teams have truly mastered over the last 18 months. During this time, they've extended great efforts toward keeping our students' education on track, scaling class activities down and up and down again, uh, developing innovative ways of bringing the hospital into the virtual classroom, and successfully graduating now two cohorts of competent and compassionate young doctors 
from our world-class medical school. So no matter what comes next, you're in excellent hands with the Duke NUS education team. Similarly, the organizers have gone to great lengths to ensure that today's ceremony will be a meaningful event for this new class of medical students along with their family and loved ones. I think this is the third time uh, I've had a chance to virtually meet with the class of 2025 since you've arrived. And, and by the way, my office will be setting up times for us to meet face to face throughout the course of the year. But this is definitely the first time I've had the pleasure to meet your families and loved ones, even if it has to be virtually today. And I'd like to give uh, my warmest greetings to all of you and welcome to the Duke NUS family. Let's give families and friends of the class of 2025 a virtual Zoom round of applause. I know you all are very proud of this extraordinary uh, group of young people as are we. The class of 2025 is indeed a remarkable group. I shouldn't really say this in front of them, but they are really one of the most, in terms of their credentials, one of the most academically accomplished groups we've had in the school. Uh, earning their first degrees in the world's best universities, but they also bring with them maturity, diverse backgrounds, and life experiences that will enrich our medical community. These are the qualities that distinguish Duke NUS medical students and make our school a unique institution. So on behalf of Duke NUS, let me say thank you uh, to the families and loved ones for nurturing and supporting these remarkable medical students to help them arrive at this exciting stage in their lives. The next four years will be exhilarating, but also challenging for them. Uh, but I know they're up to the task and I also know that they will still need your continuing love and encouragement. So to the class of 2025, let me speak directly to you now. Uh, today represents an important step toward the profession you have chosen. This ceremony, ceremony focuses on the essence of your future life as a doctor, your ethical commitment to your patients above all else as articulated in the Hippocratic Oath. This oath has been taken by countless generations of doctors to affirm their dedication to principles that form the foundation of our profession principles we adhere to throughout our medical careers. And this afternoon, our master academic clinicians and all the medical doctors here will rise to take this oath with you. I must say that as many times as I've done this, I still get a little choked up reciting the oath, which highlights our connection to the very proud history of our profession and the outstanding role models who have gone before us spanning many centuries now. It is a reminder of how fortunate and privileged we are to be a part of this ancient tradition. Despite having lived almost 2,500 years ago, Hippocrates remains widely recognized as the father of medicine, a pioneer in articulating natural causes of disease and separating them from superstition and angry gods. While his treatment methods, such as uh, the use of three quarts of donkey milk plus salt prescribed for kidney disease, do seem a bit peculiar by today's standards. However, his clinical assessments and insights made without the assistance of x-rays, ultrasounds, or other advanced technology were quite amazing. His example serves as a reminder of the importance of careful history taking, observation, and physical examination, even as we rely on today's advanced technologies. Hippocrates also remains relevant because of his appreciation for the critical importance of the intimate human, human interactions that are fundamental to the practice of medicine. His oath articulates and codifies his interactions in a manner that, that has withstood the test of time. More currently, this past August, another tradition that has its origins in ancient Greece, Greece the Olympic Games, offered another unexpected lesson for all of us that is especially relevant in our current trying times. As you're probably aware, the world champion gymnast, Simone Biles, withdrew from the main competitions to focus on her mental health and well being. She did this with the full support and understanding of her coaches and teammates. And indeed, the US gymnastics teams rallied around her with one medal winning performance after another. Simone eventually came back to end her Olympic campaign on a high, winning a bronze medal with her performance on the balance beam. There are many lessons to learn from this episode, but it is certainly an example of courage and resilience. Illustrating the importance, especially in stressful times, of paying attention to our individual mental well being and supporting those around us. At Duke NUS, we want, we want you to grow into outstanding clinicians 
as well as resilient individuals who lead with courage. And we have purposefully and explicitly designed our programs around these principles to support you on this journey. And what an exciting and marvelous journey you're about to embark on. In a few moments, you will don your white coats and with this simple act, you will assume and acknowledge the special roles and obligations that define your new profession. Later, you'll be called upon to stand and recite the Hippocratic Oath alongside doctors from across the school and the Academic Medical Center. In the same way, this group will be walking beside you for the next four years while you grow and develop into outstanding clinicians. So, congratulations. Welcome once again, class of 2025, your families and loved ones. Suzanne, back to you. Be it the healthcare professionals that I've met in the hospitals, who are going all the way out to support the patients, or my family back at home, who are giving their all in supporting me during the pandemic itself and now during my studies. Each individual that I meet inspire me in their own unique way and they push me to be the best. Thank you, Dean Kaufman. We will now be moving on to the presentation of the White Coats. I now invite Vice Dean of Education, Professor Ian Curran, to elaborate on the significance of the White Coat Ceremony. Dr. Jun Yu will then introduce the class of 2025 as they symbolically receive their White Coats from Professor Ian Curran. Professor Curran? Thank you, Dr. Goh. May I thank each and every one of you for joining us this afternoon to celebrate the arrival of our new class of 2025 into the Duke NUS Medical School. The White Coat Ceremony is a very special occasion as it marks the formal start of our students' long and challenging journey to becoming doctors. A journey which upon graduation culminates with their entry into the noblest of professions, the medical profession. Normally, we would all gather together in person, students and faculty, family and friends to celebrate and mark this auspicious moment. But sadly, this has not been possible again this year. As Dean has mentioned, we are in exceptional times. An extraordinary global challenge is facing humanity. Uh, it is a time such as this that the true value, dedication and sacrifice of the medical profession is evident for all to see. The white coat uh, is a talismanic emblem of the medical profession. And it is with great pride that we present our incoming class with their first white coats. Class of 2025, by symbolically presenting you with this white coat, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you into the family of Duke NUS Medical School and to formally recognize this moment as the beginning of your long and I hope rewarding personal journey to join the medical profession. As Dean mentioned, we have high expectations of you. To introduce the class, I'm pleased to invite our alumnus, Dr. June Yu, to also share a few words of encouragement. Dr. Yu, please. Thank you, Prof. Curran. Here as Dean Guest, an incoming batch of Duke NUS 2025 medical students, I am June Yu, alumnus from the class of 2020. First of all, congratulations to all of you for making it into medical school. The medical journey is rife with many challenges and uncertainties. However, bear in mind that you have the potential and are equipped with the abilities to overcome whatever difficulties you could face. If you require a helping hand or support, please reach out to your faculty, college masters, seniors, alumni, and staff. We are here for you. Brace yourself mentally and physically as you join your batchmates on the climb. You will be intense but enjoyable. There will be precious friendships forged and you will discover strength in yourself that you may not even know you possess. Now it is my honor to present the class of 2025. First, we have Abu Bakar Bing Offman, Chai Shu Xian Eleanor, Ezreal Nicole Chan, Chi Jing Wing, Chen Zhehan, Elizabeth Chen Jingwen, Grace Chen Inghui, Ezekiel Chong Zi Ken, Chong Jie Qi. Welcome to the school. Congratulations. 
wear your white coat with pride. Chen Ye Wei, Shanro Chao Yu Shen, Chao Wai Xing Dina, Chong Hong Lam, Benjamin Cuts, Fan Rong Si, Fan Shu Yan, Rashida Fabin, Fu Brian. Congratulations, welcome to the school. Wear your white coat with pride. Gan Yu, Henry Go Di Shen, Pamela Go Hui Yi, Clarissa Esmeralda Halim. Han Rei Zhou Nicholas, Rachel Hu Jia Yi, Mimi Higuchi, Su Wei Jing, Yun Han Yi. Welcome to the school. Congratulations. Wear your white coat with pride. Lumi Kinjo, Stephanie Chi Wai Kun, Lao Rei Ling Rina, Jolene Li Li Ling, Li Yi Xuan Elias Li Chi Ying, Liang Wei Quan Edmund, Ling Ying Xi, Ling Yu Jing, Liao Yu Ying. Congratulations. Welcome to the school. Wear your white coat with pride. Lo Da Rong, Jasriel Lo Ju Li, Jomain Lo, Benedict Lui Ying, M. Hima Prashad, Vivek Morali, Gerald Ng Shong Chong, Jody Dyer Ryan Ng, Ng Yong Zhi. Welcome to the school. Congratulations. Wear your white coat with pride. Ong Ying Shi Isaac, Wilson Ong Wei Xian, Han Wei Ming Jeremy, Rao Shivani Ragunath, S. Punita, Claire Marie Shrishta, Sidatan Minakshi, Shering Sun Xue Yun, Tan Si Ning Jermaine. Congratulations. Welcome to the school. Wear your white coat with pride. Tan Yi Ching Edina, Tan Yu Bing, Tei Shu Xuan Lian, Tio K Ming. Shamin He Li Ming, Glenda Wei Chi Hui, Faith Wang Pi Ying, Wang Wai Kit, Yvonne Wang Chi Feng. Welcome to the school. Congratulations. Wear your white coat with pride.
Chu Chen, Yang Lu, No Yo Sing In, Yo Ro Chi Joy, Ik Yi Jing, Vanessa, Pie Yin Win Chi, Sing Ning Xiang, Shang Yue, Chu Yi Chen. Congratulations. Welcome to the school. Wear your white coat with pride. Congratulations, class of 2025. Congratulations on what you have achieved, and we look forward to what you will go on to accomplish. It is a great honor and privilege to be able to join the medical profession. Do take the time to celebrate and enjoy with your loved ones before you embark on this next chapter of your life. And I look forward to welcoming you as my colleague in a few short years. A warm welcome to Duke NUS. And that concludes the introduction of the class of 2025. Join us in congratulating them once again. Thank you, Dr. Yu. A special highlight we have this year is a short video of our students sharing their hopes and aspirations for being a doctor. So what inspired you to study medicine? So it really started when I was a competitive swimmer. Sometimes myself or my friends, we would have uh, pains in our shoulder, maybe in our triceps as well, uh, often in our hips. I really come to realize how much an impact something as small as a tight muscle can have on an individual's day. Having a, a greater understanding of what I was experiencing just brought much greater peace for myself and I hope to bring that forward to my uh, patients as well. I unfortunately have had two separate encounters with COVID-19. One of the big takeaways that I got from my encounters was actually the, the courage shown by our healthcare workers. Hey Panita, you were in the front line during the COVID-19 pandemic. What was it like for you? Did you have any difficulties during the time? The pandemic was unexpected and as a newly minted pharmacist, uh, the growth that I had to see personally and professionally was immense. I also witnessed how the doctors and nurses, besides providing just the medical care for the patients, they took a step more and they actually provided emotional support for the patients. I then realised that patient care is multidimensional, it's not just limited to medications, compared to as a pharmacist. As a doctor, I felt that I would be in a better position to provide a more holistic care for my patient. So that's what prompted me to pursue an MD degree in Duke NUS. Jeremy, what draws you to family medicine? I think one factor would definitely be my father. So my father is actually a family physician. It is a very different kind of personal connection with the patient. You really get to journey and feel emotions with patients through a myriad of reasons and through a myriad of occasions. And it is quite similar to actually a hobby that I pursue photography because I actually love photography for a reason which is I'm really able to immortalise a person's emotions within a photograph. Vivek, how do you reconcile your love for mathematics and medicine? I always thought maths is a very good way to consolidate very complex ideas and thoughts into very simplistic equations that give you a picture of literally everything. And medicine, in a sense, is a complex field full of puzzles waiting to be translated. So I aspire to move the mathematical equations that I scribble every day on paper to enhancing care, primarily through personalised medicine. So hey Eleanor, what made you give up law for medicine? I decided to make the move from law to medicine because I felt that in medicine it allows you to help people in a very direct way and on a very regular basis. When I do pro bono work as a corporate lawyer, it mainly involves reviewing documents. There's not so much direct contact with beneficiaries. So I really wanted a way where I could really help people in a very direct manner and interact with people. So this was an article that I came across in May 2020 and it was an article about a graduate in his 30s who graduated medical school then and it was inspirational for me because it was a reminder that it's better late than never. The environment at Duke NUS is really conducive to learning. For instance, there's team-based learning, so we have a lot of interactions with our team members. So I think it's good that the school promotes diversity because I think that everyone has a different perspective, so coming from different backgrounds, it helps us to like, look at things from a different angle. 
For most people, superheroes fly around in their capes, saving the world. When I was younger, my heroes wore white coats. As I grew even older, I realized the real heroes were the ones that supported us and motivated us to pick up these white coats. One of my biggest supporters is actually my grandmother. White coat ceremony over Zoom this year actually presents a very unique opportunity for myself where I can be with her to attend the white coat ceremony. Being able to celebrate with her at the time is something that is very special. It's also a time for me to reflect on how far I've come. It signifies the beginning of a lifelong journey. Though it may be challenging at times, I believe it would be rewarding. It's a reminder of our commitment to be good doctors. I am one step closer to becoming the physician that I want to be. It's us donning on our white coats to serve people to the best of our abilities. It all starts here. I would now like to invite Professor Curran to introduce and lead the recitation of the Hippocratic Oath. Professor Curran, please. Thank you, Dr. Go. The next part of our white coat ceremony is a very significant and solemn moment for all physicians and medical students. As you all know and expect, doctors are held to the very highest standards of ethical practice. As our medical students will also be part of healthcare teams, uh, they will be interacting with and contributing to the care of patients. So we believe strongly that they must also embody and live by the same high ideals and standards even before they qualify as a doctor. After all, it's important to build good habits. The Hippocratic Oath formalizes these responsibilities by reciting the Hippocratic Oath, an individual pledges to uphold the highest standards of personal and professional conduct. Shortly, I will lead the class of 2025 in reciting the Hippocratic Oath, together with our clinical colleagues from across the SingHealth healthcare system. This marks their formal entry into Duke NUS Medical School. I now invite the class of 2025 to reflect on the significance and relevance of the Hippocratic Oath to the medical profession, an ancient oath attributed to Hippocrates, a Greek physician from the fourth century BC, and as Dean has said, considered by many to be the father of medicine. The Hippocratic Oath sets out a set of principles and values, a code of medical ethics, by which a clinician should practice medicine. And although written nearly two and a half thousand years ago, the oath is as relevant today as it ever was. It provides all physicians with guidance as to how they should practice medicine solely for the benefit of their patients. This afternoon, the class of 2025 will recite the oath through their individual and collective public declaration of the Hippocratic Oath, they affirm their acceptance of their personal responsibilities as medical students as they begin the long apprenticeship to becoming clinicians. We symbolically gather to recite the Hippocratic Oath at critical times in our students' journey. First, at this white coat ceremony, which marks the beginning of the Doctor of Medicine program. In due course, we will all gather again at their future graduation and collectively reaffirm the Hi Hippocratic Oath together signaling the end of their basic medical education. Graduation will mark their formal entry into the medical profession. The oath lays out the professional values and personal responsibilities that our medical students all agree to uphold in their future care and interactions with their patients and colleagues. Students, by taking this oath, you will bond with your fellow students, your forebears, your physician colleagues, your teachers, and your mentors. At this solemn moment, I would also like to invite fellow physicians here present who would also like to retake the Hippocratic Oath to now please unmute your microphones and join the class of 2025 and I uh, recite the Hippocratic Oath together. Class of 2025, please turn on your microphones. The oath will be shown on the screen at the bottom. I will start the oath and invite you all to recite line by line after me. I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear. I whatever I hold most sacred. 
I will be loyal to the profession of medicine. And just and generous to its members. Just and generous to its members. That I will lead my life and practice my art. That I will lead my life and practice my art. Uprightness and honor. In upright brightness and, and honor. That in whatsoever home I shall enter. Shall be for the good of the sick and the well. Shall be for the good of the sick and the well. The utmost of my power. And that I will hold myself aloof from wrong and from corruption. From the tempting of others to vice. I will exercise my art. For the cure of my patient. Prevention of disease. Prevention of disease. Give no drugs and perform no operation. Give no drugs and perform no operation. For a criminal purpose and far less suggest such a thing. criminal purpose and far less suggest such a thing. That whatsoever I shall see or hear of the lives of men. That I shall see or hear of the lives of men. Is not fitting to be spoken. Is not fitting to be spoken. I will keep inviolably secret. These things I do promise. I do promise. And in proportion as I am faithful to this oath. Proportion May happiness and good repute be ever mine. Happiness and good repute be ever mine. Opposite if I shall be forsworn. Thank you all. It's always incredibly moving to be part of this collective affirmation of the high professional values that underpin the medical profession. Class of 2025, congratulations and welcome to Duke NUS Medical School. We might not actually be able to delay or rather change a patient's outcome, but I think what was inspirational is that as a doctor, you get to really journey with patients in their final moments. You get to make sure that they have the quality of life. They're able to be with the ones that they love. Thank you, Professor Curran, for leading the oath. We will now be taking a commemorative group photograph. Please make sure your cameras are all on and smile. Is really appreciates that people that have different backgrounds can contribute differently. Being from a different background and having working experience, it helps me to also see things from a different perspective, so I can give input that's from a different view. Everyone has something different to bring to the table. Please join us now as we celebrate with a wave through the Zoom room to welcome our new class of 2025.
Nelly the Congratulations, class of 2025. We are glad and excited to have each one of you as a part of our Duke and US family. And we will continue to support and encourage you along your journey to become doctors. And I'm confident you will flourish and excel with us. Ladies and gentlemen, friends and family, on behalf of Duke and US, thank you for taking the time to be with us today. We hope you enjoyed the white coat ceremony. We will be ending this session shortly, and the chat is now open for you to send in your well wishes and congratulations to the class. To conclude the ceremony, we invite you to watch a short photo montage of the class of 2025 and their families. Thank you again, everyone, and have a great evening ahead. Patient is not just a problem to solve. It's someone's mother, someone's father, and someone's child. It's someone's everything. And so we owe it to them to try our best in giving them the best treatment possible.